Hey guys, I'm Moonball today. So today is the final video of 2022 and what better video to do other than ranking the rugby nations for 2022, going off the calendar year, you know, you know, which nations really created the memorable moments, you know, which nations, you know, kind of uh, sparked, uh, sparked a light in terms of matches, but also just, you know, kind of which nations, you know, really just um, improved throughout the year and obviously deserved uh, to be rewarded, but also to uh, kind of, um, I guess, uh, pick out a few nations who obviously um, did uh, well, under under improve essentially and kind of uh, did the opposite. So um, yeah, well we're gonna do that kind of within this video. But uh, before we do, of course, guys, uh, definitely like and subscribe. Would greatly appreciate that, guys. And um, yeah, let's just get straight into this. So of course, um, you know, we do have um, England that we will start off with here. England have had a very um, up and down year in the Middle East, um, particularly with the downs I'd say at the end. But uh, of course, you know, starting off with the Six Nations, which would be very um. I guess uh, generous here in terms of <laughs> England's performance and I guess the situation around them. But um, I mean, they, they did finish uh, third um, overall within the Six Nations. I mean, they did lose against what France and um, France and Ireland, and I believe what, did they beat Scotland? I'm not sure they did. Um, again, it was just, it, it just one of those six. It was just one of those Six Nations where England just really couldn't stand out. I mean, again, you can maybe say the fixtures were against them in terms of some of the, the fixtures they had. I mean. But yeah, they just didn't on their on their day. They just did not perform. I mean, Ireland beating them, you know, in England was just a bad result for them. I mean, for you know, France to obviously beat them in that was just a great game overall. But then, yeah, just a lot of um, I guess heartache, um, inter um, headaches essentially for England from that Six Nations. So definitely one of the areas of the you can say of the year which you don't really look look too fondly at. But of course, when you look at the Giants Nationals, um, you know, England did uh, impress obviously being uh, the Aussies obviously down in down in um, Australia, 2-1 in that serious win. And they were really impressive, actually. I mean, I was really impressed with uh, Courtney Laws, especially. And he's probably my standout player, except for England this year. I mean, you could maybe say Marcus Smith as well, because I think he's the, the given one that you'd always say. But um, but Courtney Laws has really stood out for me, I'd say, with him this year. And he's really, um, again, obviously, I know he was um, injured later on with the United Nations, but um, still, no, very impressive. I was really impressed by him throughout that Giants and National Series. But um, of course, leading into the United Nations, um, yeah, England just uh, fell off. Obviously, that big loss against Argentina was just massive. And then, obviously, they did beat, um, I think, Fiji. But then again, they drew against the All Blacks. And, you know, obviously, they, they lost against the Box. And that was kind of the final straw for Eddie Jones. So, um, yeah, just not a really good year um, for England. But again, you know, with obviously, uh, you know, Steve Borford, obviously, now the new head coach, um, hopefully they can kind of turn those performances around and see if maybe 2023 is a, a good year for them, of course, with the Rebel Cup. Um, along the corner, um, it's gonna be very fascinating to see if that if this um, change in terms of the head coaching roles does affect their performance or not. But um, yeah, no, on a on a in a weird way, I'm kind of hoping them hoping them to do good. But um, we'll see if they do that or not. Um, <laughs> we'll see. But um, yeah, if I had to put them, if I had to rank them somewhere, I mean, look, I'm gonna probably rank them because again, we do have Banger, a very solid, did the job, Stinger, Stinker, and L. I'm probably gonna put them with Stinker because. They, they weren't an L because, oh god, again, they, they won some games, of course, but Stinker, I think, is, an, is a, probably a, a safe bet because they, did, they definitely didn't do the job. They underperformed uh, massively. Um, so, yeah, Stinker, I think, is where I'd put them. Again, we do have Ireland, uh, the next uh, Six Nations team, and, yeah, they're probably, they probably had the best year, I'd say, out of anyone, Ireland. They were just fantastic. I mean, again, you could see France because they won all their, I mean, they, they did win all their games. Oh, this is such an annoying thing. France and Ireland were so good this year, but Ireland, I just, I'm, I'm going to put Ireland ahead. Again, look, I'm going to put Ireland, it's between very solid and banger, but I'm going to put Ireland within banger because I just think, again, look, they did come second from the Six Nations, obviously losing that um, against France, but to beat the All Blacks, you know, in New Zealand, that's like, just for any team to do that, that's like just so impressive. And Ireland, just fair play to them. They, they had a fantastic year. And of course, they did beat, um, I believe, the Box as well as the uh, the Wallabies as well um, in the All Nations. And yeah, they just stood their, yeah, they, just, they just stood their ground. Um, so I was really impressed by them. And if I had to say one notable player from them who I was impressed by, I'd say Mark, uh, Mac Hansen. I think he's had a good year um, for the, for, um, for Ireland. And I'd say Johnny Sexton. I know, I know it's obvious, but his, his experience in that series against the the All Blacks really stood out. And of course, you can't forget uh, Josh Vandefer, of course, um, player of the year for, um, for this year in 2022. And he was just so impressive. He he went, like, he he just went another level um, within this year. So um, yeah, you have, you have to give him credit. And um, yeah, no, Ireland, I'll put them in banger. That's where I'm gonna put them. 
Uh, next on the list, of course, we do have the likes of Scotland. I mean, Scotland is one of those teams where they had a very average year, I'm going to say. I'm not going to say they weren't, they weren't as bad as England, in my opinion. I mean, they didn't finish fourth. Uh, but again, they had some good performances throughout the year. I mean, obviously, they did go to Argentina, and they did actually lose that series 2-1. So it's kind of um they didn't do well in that in, in terms of that sense, but again they did have a, they did kind of uh, get a few wins um from the United Nations and actually beat Argentina uh, convincingly actually at home um kind of got some revenge there and uh, I believe they did beat um, another team if I'm not mistaken I think it was like either Fiji I think it was Fiji if I'm not mistaken but um yeah I think overall I'm gonna say that they did the job I think that's pretty uh, pretty fair in my, in, on their part and if I had to say a player who stood up for me I'd say I mean. I'm trying to think of someone else. I mean, no, I have to say Darcy Graham. It has to be Darcy Graham. He's just he was fantastic. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with him. But, um, yeah, France, look, I, I, I talked about them before. They're 100% in banger. The question is, do I put them above Ireland? Um, I'm probably not going to. Again, I know they like they won all their games, right? They won all their games. It is like what you every rugby nation wants that. You want, <laughs> you want to have that. But... I'm not putting France ahead of Ireland because within the July internationals, they played against Japan while Ireland beat New Zealand in New Zealand. And that is by far a more convincing um, you know, accomplishment uh, within the rugby, uh, rugby uh, world, essentially, uh, to do that. So um, yeah, i got to give Ireland credit. Um, but France were unbelievable um, once more, of course. Uh, winning that Six Nations was incredible for them. That's probably uh, the peak essentially what they wanted to achieve this year. So obviously congrats towards France. And yeah, no, very excited to uh, go there, of course, in 2023. But um, yeah, we'll move on then towards uh, Wales. Again, Wales is on the other end of the spectrum, essentially, uh, in terms of the uh, Six Nations. Similar to England, they didn't have a very impressive year. They did finish uh, fifth, so second last within the, um, the Six Nations. But again, they did lose to Italy. Um, and they did actually lose, I mean, well, within the... July Internationals, they lost 2-1 to the box. So they did actually get a win against the box, which was pretty impressive. But again, within the United Nations, they were just horrendous. Like they, <laughs> they, I don't think they won a game, if I'm not mistaken. If I, am I wrong in saying that? I, I, I don't think they won a game. I mean, they lost to Georgia as well. I mean, it, it was just, it was one of those game, years where, yeah, they really were just, yeah, they didn't play well. They really didn't play well. I mean, I think they did beat the Scots, if I'm not mistaken, but um, in the Six Nations, but... Oh, again, I actually want to put them in L because I just think this year was just such a bad year for Wales. But again, I, I believe because of this, they, they can't do anything worse. You know what? I am actually going to put Wales in an L. I think that's it's fair to say that Wales just didn't... This is probably their worst year ever. Um, so I, I got to put them within yeah, the, the L category. But I'm only saying this because I believe they will achieve you know they'll, they'll get better than what they had in 2022 especially with um of course um oh how do i forgot his name this is so bad for me warren gatlin there you go so happy i remember his name <laughs> but um yeah with warren gatlin now back in charge i've got to go with him so um yeah i feel like he, he he'll definitely accelerate um wales and definitely um propel them in, in terms of this leader's board maybe for 2023 but um yeah hopefully they can do well from the sick uh, with the um the Six Nations, as well as the uh, Rugby World Cup. But of course, Wales, for now, i got to put them in the L category because 2022 just was not their year. For Italy, I mean, it's the exact opposite. I actually think they were very good throughout this whole year. Again, you have to remember that Italy are are still, they're still considered a tier one nation. Um, and they, they proved, I think for the first time in a while, why they, why they are considered a tier one nation. Because Previously, obviously in the past, Italy have been criticized in terms of not really making it, well, not being considered as a tier one nation due to the amount of wins that they, you know, they get each year. And obviously they did finish last in the Six Nations, but they did beat Wales. Um, and that was a very um, big achievement, obviously. And then within the, uh, within, I believe the, um, was it the July Internationals? I mean, I know they played a few games in there. I don't, I don't believe they won as much as they could have, but I know particularly from the United Nations, however, you know, they did beat the likes of you know, Australia. I mean, that was a big win. To beat the Wallabies, that was fantastic, actually. And I believe they also beat um, they beat someone else. They beat Samoa, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, no, they, they were really good throughout the whole thing. Actually, it might have been Tonga. It's one of the two. But um, yeah, overall, I think they were just great. And obviously, they did have um, a few games where they, they really looked brilliant um, on their part. And I mean, Angi Kabuto uh, was just fantastic for them. One of the standout players by far. So for Italy, I. I actually want to say that, that it's a weird thing to put this, but I'm actually going to say very solid for Italy. I just thought they had a great year in terms of like the the 
the memorable results which they got. You know, two big results beating Wales in Wales in the Six Nations and obviously winning, um, winning. Yeah, that was just a great game to watch. And that last try, they obviously they scored, and then beating the Wallabies as well was just it was, it was good. And uh, so yeah, they have a really solid team, a young young core, which is now developing, which is good to see. So um, I'm actually saying very solid for early, which is which is not something I would have ever um, think I'd say. But um, of course, for Fiji, we'll move on down towards the Pacific Island Nations. I think this is pretty simple in terms of how I'm going to rank this. I mean, again, Samoa did win the Pacific Island Nations, so I'm going to put Samoa. I'm going to say in terms of did the job because they they won what they had to win within this year, and I think that's pretty solid for them. Uh, Fiji again, they they had a. Aver they had a very average year, but I it wasn't as good as Samoa. So I'm gonna put them up in stinker. And Tonga, yeah, they they're one team which I, I really expected to do a lot more for this year, just because I believe out of all the teams, obviously due to the world eligibility uh, rule rules that obviously got um, you know put in place, obviously for 2022, but started you know all you know all these players now allowed to represent their uh, you know, another nation. Tonga, I thought, was the team that actually benefited the most from this. Um, so I was really surprised to see that they've actually finished last within the within that Pacific um, Pacific uh, Nations Cup. Um, so, um, I mean, I think I have to put within Stinker. I, I, I'm not going to say L because it just wasn't as bad as Wales. And again, obviously, these teams did play with the United Nations as well. Like I said, um, Fiji, I think, played against Scotland. Uh, did lose, same as, uh, I believe, Samoa against Italy. But still, it's good experience, obviously, going into the World Cup for next year. So, um, yeah, I think they can keep their heads up high. But um, again, we'll now move on then towards the, um, I guess this is like the world qualifying path I'm thinking about in terms of the European nations. And um, yeah, like Georgia, straight up Georgia. I mean, I, I would put Georgia ahead of Samoa just because I think they had a great year in terms of getting what, getting what they needed to achieve. Obviously qualifying for the Rugby World Cup, exactly what they needed. And obviously finished first as well um, by by a long set actually. So um, yeah, no, definitely a well play by Georgia because they're a really developing a team there, which is you know really just fun to watch actually in all honesty. So um, yeah, it's one of those where um, I, yeah I'm really excited to see what they can do obviously for the future. But, um, but yeah, no. In terms of you know the other teams again, Portugal and this, this is where it gets fascinating, guys. Because if you don't remember, of course, um, you know this is where uh, you know Spain originally was in the conversation obviously for qualifying, but due to <laughs> happening again for the second time in a row, um, they obviously had a player who you know, wasn't really eligible to play for Spain in the first place, even though they actually qualified through. So because of that, and then the actual Romania took their place. And of course, Portugal did actually qualify through this process as well. Um, so I'm actually, again, Portugal, I'm gonna give, they didn't have, I'm gonna, Portugal's a weird one because they, they played well, but I'm not gonna say they played as well as England, because I think England obviously had more convincing results. So I'm gonna say they're right there. I think that's pretty fair to say. Um, Romania, I'm gonna put the same thing because they both qualified, but I just don't, I just don't think it was as good as what Samoa did. Because Samoa won the Pacific, Pacific Nations Cups, so that's the reason why I'm putting them there ahead of these two. But still, fair play obviously towards Portugal and Romania because they obviously qualified for the Rep World Cup. That is fantastic. So on um, fair play to them, of course. Um, and then Spain, I mean, this is a very easy one. I'm gonna put them with an L. You know, disqualification. That's very simple to put. Um, but um, yeah, for Japan, of course, uh, Japan had a very um. Was that, they had a, well, they, they lost some games this year, of course, uh, due to France. Obviously, had that series in the July internationals. Just wasn't, you know, really what you expected from them. Also, they did lose to New Zealand as well. Um, and, um, yeah, just, it, yeah, they didn't really impress a lot, I'd say, within this year. Um, again, they had, some, they had some games against England, of course, some of the automations, which they did lose by a hefty margin. Um, same, to, I think, for, for two other teams as well, if I'm not mistaken. So... Yeah, I think Fran oh sorry, I think Japan will probably be from the Stinger character category as well. But I'm actually gonna put them behind Romania and Portugal because uh, Romania and Portugal just because you know, obviously they qualified and that was a bigger achievement to what they did this year than what Japan have achieved. So um so yeah, I'm gonna go in that order as well. Uruguay, again, another another nation that didn't have the best of the year. Um, they only won two out of their seven game, uh, two out of their seven games, um, both <laughs> both victories against Romania. So again, I'm gonna put them I'm going to put them ahead of Romania because they really have achieved, they also achieved obviously for the role, um, achieved uh, qualification already. So I'm going to put them above Romania, but um, but still a stinker of a year. Not, you know, just they need to get more wins in the board. And again, they've lost uh, several games um, against, you know, international teams as well. So that's the reason why I'm going to put them up in that, um, I guess, category in that sense. But um, again, we'll move on there more towards a positive mode, to say the least, obviously with um, Chile. 
very glad for them, of course. Uh, you know, again, I'm American, guys. I don't remember. I'm, I'm part American uh, from my mom. But, um, yeah, it was very unfortunate to see, obviously, that the U.S. didn't uh, qualify uh, the first time <laughs> for, um, against Chile, obviously, with that playoff uh, game in the United States. But Chile, I mean, fair play. I mean, you were just fantastic uh, throughout that game. And, um, yeah, just the energy. I mean, it just showed that, you know, you were so motivated throughout that game. And it was just great to see because Chile had just advanced and advanced. Uh, um, you know, particularly from last year to now, and they're getting better actually. So it's really cool to see actually. And I'm learning a, a lot more about you know the different type of players they actually have at the moment. And it's um, yeah, no, just really fascinating to see what they're going to do obviously for the future. But um, I do believe there's actually going to be the um, what's it called Super Rugby Americas, I'm not mistaken. And I believe they're going to have teams. I believe from Chile, from uh, Chile, Argentina. I believe from like um, the US. I believe there'll be one from like Paraguay, if I'm not mistaken, from Brazil. So it's kind of a cool competition there, which is developing. And obviously, that'll help these nations as well even um, grow better and obviously kind of, um, I guess, get their academy system even working. Um, so, um, yeah, no, I really like that a lot. But for Chile, yeah, I'm actually going to say they, they they did so well to qualify. I mean, they're a surprise nation, guys. So they're even more surprised than they do compared to the U.S. I mean, uh, did I put, did the, was it as impressed with Chile? I was really impressed with Chile. That's the thing. Yeah, you know, what? I'm gonna put Chile in very solid. They're very <laughs> just because of what they did within that within that qualifying for the Record World Cup. It's just it's a massive achievement for them as a nation. So I'm gonna actually put them in very solid. That's purely for that. And of course, the exact same reason the US. I mean, the US just uh, I mean, uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, they obviously had that first chance against Chile to to win. They you know blew that essentially. And obviously went into the um Repa Hatch tournament, which was based in Dubai, and they faced against Kenya. Hong Kong and Portugal, and of course, um, yeah, when it came towards you know um, <laughs> the U.S., they did beat Hong Kong yeah, as well as um, it was at uh, Kenya. But again, the final came down towards Portugal and the U.S. And the U.S.A. were leading twelve to nine, if I'm not mistaken. But Portugal obviously had that last minute penalty, and if they did that, then they, they qualified. So yeah, it was a, a sad way to obviously end their kind of um, chance in the Rugby World Cup, but. Because you know they're obviously going to be a host in the in the near future, um, you know, in 2032, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, it's just not a good sign for the U.S. rep there. So um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put them in the L category, and I, I'm not going to put them ahead of Spain because. So I, I am going to put them ahead of Spain because obviously Spain got disqualified even though they qualified. So that's I think that's even worse of a worse of a thing really in my opinion. But um, yeah, but still, USA just just wasn't your year again. But anyway, we're moving on then towards the last uh, few nations here, obviously with the uh, the Rugby Championship nations uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. And yeah, all four of them actually, I was just so impressed by throughout this year. Um, I mean, Argentina, I'd say, in all honesty, I was a, I was most impressed with Argentina this year out of all of them. They were, they are, they blew me away. I, they were just so good this year that I, I, I mean, again, let's just start off with how, what happened. So again, you do have the Lions Nationals, right? It beat Scotland 2-1 in Argentina. So that's just an amazing result, uh, to say the least. And they go into the rugby championship. And again, they did, they did finish. Um, did they finish last or third? Let me just quickly check this because I think they did finish last. But but again, you have to remember that they they got some <laughs> massive results. Um, I just say the least, massive results in terms of that rugby championship. And it was one of those games. Like, I mean, they, the game obviously against the All Blacks, where they're just fantastic. Obviously, being the All Blacks in New Zealand, it was just mind blowing, at least. And yeah, so yeah, here we go. They did finish last by only by one point um, against Australia, but um, but yeah, man, they got two results. They, they got two wins, um, four losses. I mean, so they beat um, they beat Aust- I think they beat yeah they beat Australia and they beat uh, New Zealand, which was just mind blowing, at least. Um, so I mean, they were just fantastic there. And of course, uh, going into to the Autumn Nations, they beat England in England, which was just mind blowing um, even more. And then um, they had another result, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, did they beat Wales? I'm not sure they beat Wales. I think that's the team that I think Wales did actually win against. Um, and obviously against Scotland as well, they lost. Um, but um, I mean, I, I want to say a banner of a year for Argentina because they got, they got, it's similar to Italy, like where they got scalps, like uh, scalps, I mean, like in terms of like the results they got. And they beat New Zealand in New Zealand. They beat Australia in in Argentina. They beat they won their series against the Scots in Argentina. Yeah, I'm gonna say that banger of the year. 
I think Archie had a banger of the year. And uh, yeah, Buffelli was a big part to play in that, guys. I mean, in my opinion, I'd say Buffelli was, you know, I, I would say player of the year this year. Uh, in my opinion, um, I know Josh Lander was fantastic. Um, and you can't deny how well he played. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be against. I'm not against, by the way, Josh Lander winning the player of the year because he definitely deserved it. Even like Lacanio Alms in the conversation, in my opinion. But but Buffelli, I was just every game I saw of him, he was the the impact player. He was the one who won those games, and the other two didn't do that. Like for the because obviously they have more players to help them. Buffelli was just the main man. So um, yeah, that's why I was just really impressed about the Pumas this year. But um, we'll move on anyway. I'm keeping them in that order as well, by the way, because I, I don't think they had as good of a year compared to France and Ireland. But um, of course, the box, again, I think they had a good year. Uh, I'm not going to say they were a banger because um, obviously they had results which obviously went against their way. You know, they, you know, I mean, as a box supporter, you know, I, I have to be very um, honest here. You know, they did, they did beat Wales 2 1, but to have, to eat, they should be beating Wales 3 0, to be perfectly honest. So for Wales to even get that result was like really good for them. And obviously, um, a letdown for the box, but um, I guess they kind of made up for it with the rugby championship. Obviously, getting results against the, the All Blacks in uh, in um, in South Africa, as well as you know beating Australia away, which is pretty impressive actually. When you think about the uh, the record, if you look back at results, and obviously the record in Australia not being as well. Uh, I mean, obviously beating Argentina twice, uh, home and away. So, um, and then obviously, with, and then going into the Autumn Nations, they did lose against Ireland and France, but they did beat um, the likes of you know England. And I believe Italy, if I'm not mistaken, um, away by a convincing scoreline, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say they had a very, I'm gonna think they had a very solid year. So, I'm going to put them on the top of very solid uh, for now. I think that's pretty safe to say. Uh, definitely not in the banger category because I just think they weren't as good as the, the other three teams. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Again, this is very harsh because, again, the box did beat this, well, the Pumas twice. But I was just more impressed with the Pumas results of uh, the scalps they, they took from the series. So, um yeah, I gotta go with the Pumas there. But uh, yeah, anyway, Wallabies, Wallabies. Oh, I, I feel so. I mean, they. I think they played the most international games this year, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, I, I could be wrong about that, by the way. But they played six games within the All Nations. They played six within the um, within the Rugby Championships. That's twelve. And then they played what? They played within the uh, July series against the English. So that's nineteen. If I'm not mistaken, they actually had a friendly as well. So they, it, it could have been like 20 games that I think they really played this year, 19 or 20 games. So it's just, it's really impressive the amount of games they had, guys. Um, well, some, not maybe 19 and 20, but they had like what, 15, so 15 to 16, sorry, 15 to 16 games is what I meant to say. But, um, you know, overall, it's just really fantastic from them. Um, you know, again, they did lose the series against um, England, which is probably the the only bad, I think, down, down thing really for them this year in terms of what they had. Um, again, they, they actually didn't do as well with the Europa Championship as well. Um, obviously finishing third, uh, not getting the results they needed. And again, very um, harsh, I guess, um, defeat obviously against the All Blacks um, in Australia, which is um, probably one of the games of the year, I'd say, in terms of, I guess, <laughs> a lot of controversies at least. Um, so yeah, I guess the Wallabies really felt on, uh, yeah, just felt under in, in that sense. But um, but when you look at it from the um, the automations though, they really kind of picked up a, a bit, you know, a few results there. Obviously beating Wales away, they um, they did well against South Scotland. Obviously beating them away as well. Um, yeah, they did lose against obviously the Irish as well as um, I believe. Did they lose against? No, I think the Wallabies actually beat England. The Wallabies beat England. No, no, never mind. No, I'm thinking Czech and one. No, the Wallabies, they lost to, who did they lose to? They lost to France, that's it. They lost to France, but but still, it was a very impressive game, though, because they actually took them to the wire. Um, so I'm going to say Wallabies had a very, I think they, had, they did the job. I'm going to say Top did the job. I think that's pretty fair to say. Did the job is what I'm going to put them within. And then, yeah, but lastly, but, uh, yeah, we, we have the All Blacks. And uh, the All Blacks have had a very interesting year, this is at least, of course, because, you know, the All Blacks, um, yeah, they a lot of, um, <laughs> again, a lot of controversy is going around them. Um, in terms of, you know, if Ian Foster should be in charge or not, you know, um, again, um, the All Blacks took to their guns, one with him. Uh, you know, obviously, it did start off with, you know, the, the Ireland loss, um, the Ireland serious loss in New Zealand, which was a massive, um, I guess, um, yeah, just, just just disappointment, really, for, uh, for, for all of New Zealand in that sense, because you never want to be in that situation and obviously lose that series. Um, in the first place, but they did. And then obviously it kind of continued actually with the European Championship early on, losing to both the box um, in Spring, um, in um, South Africa, as well as losing to Argentina in <laughs> New Zealand. Um, so um, yeah, after that after that result, that's where it really 
I guess, kind of changed for them. And also, that's what led them to win the rugby championship at the end of it. So, yeah, you want to really, um, I guess, talk about their mentality, actually, because to be in that place and obviously kind of win the rugby championship at the end of it is pretty impressive. So you have to give them, obviously, respect in that regard. And obviously, um, you know, going to the All Nations, they were fantastic. Obviously, beating Japan, you know, they beat Wales convincingly. They had a good win against uh, the Scots, obviously came back into that game. And then, yeah, had a draw against the, uh, the English as well. But um, yeah, overall, I think um, yeah, the All Blacks. I'm gonna say they had a very. I'm not gonna say banger, but I'm gonna say they had a very solid year. A very solid year, and I'm gonna put them ahead of the um, the box on the seven this year. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of what I'm gonna go with. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty even for what it is. Um, again, the All Blacks. Um, if I can say a key player for them this year, I'm gonna probably say Jordy Barrett, and I'm also gonna mention. Oh, is there another I can mention? Uh, oh, Chukalaho. I'm gonna say Chukalaho is hooker. He was very impressive. But um, yeah, anyway, that's kind of it, guys. Um, yeah, just thank you so much for everyone who obviously watched this video. This is the final video of 2022. Um, I most likely will post my next video after. I'm just letting you guys know now. After, um, I'd say July the 14th, maybe. Um, I'm going to post it after just because I'm writing all my assessments right now, guys. So very busy at the moment. But um, but after that, I'll be posting all the videos, of course, for Super Rugby. Um, the Six Nations obviously coming up. Um, yeah, we have the Giants and Nationals a bit of it, I guess, consumed maybe, or even the Rugby Championship um, as it is. And then obviously the Rugby World Cup. So it's going to be a fantastic year next year. Really looking forward to it, obviously. And uh, yeah, just thank you everyone to obviously um, subscribe to the channel this year. Uh, for everyone who did, you know, we've gained a lot of subscribers this year. And yeah, I'm hoping that we can reach uh, 1K by the end of the next year. That's the goal. So um, yeah, just anyway, thank you to everyone. And yeah, guys, um, I'll see you guys next time. I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker.